Our next guest uh, says that June is going to. Well, I'm going to tell. I'm going to introduce you, and then I'm going to let him uh, tell you because uh, it, it, we're not going to bury the lead on this. Let's get to Tom Lee, a uh, fun strat. He, um, he he's a pretty amazing uh, guy that we we try to visit with as much as we can. He's on kind of a roll. Um, he is managing partner and head of research at Fundstrat uh, Global Advisors, also a CNBC uh, contributor. And once again, you're doing exactly what I tell you not to do, Tom, and that is giving a price target and a time frame. Never do both. Never do, do one or the other, but you're doing it again. So 5,500 on the S&P by the end of June. It's hard not to, not to talk about that immediately. Based on, Tom, lower inflation. That's right. I think there's a fundamental case, Joe, which is uh, inflation is coming in softer than expected. And I think the job market is sort of it's cooling, but not weakening dramatically. And I think that's a good situation for equities. And I think that the this, this, this sell off in April actually hasn't really been fully recovered. And that's why we expect expected a rebound in May. But I think that carries over into June. And there's still six trillion of cash on the sidelines and margin debt still way below where it was in October 2021. So we know investors really aren't that long yet. So I, I think that comes together this month with a pretty surprisingly robust move higher. It is um, a little bit longer than, than that crazy call you made. It was based on a week, Tom. I, I remember. And it worked out for you. You were right. So now at least you're, uh, you're, you're doing it in, in, in terms of a month. In the past, when you have made these uh, these calls, it's been about inflation, hasn't it? And, and that, that that's where it is again. What, what, where, what are you seeing in terms of components that make you confident that those were outliers that we saw a couple months ago, where it looked like it was uh, inflation was was coming back? Um, yeah, the April inflation data, both CPI and PCE, kind of revealed that. The two things that the Fed's been waiting to cool are starting to cool. One is shelter inflation. You know, it's it's decelerating, even though it's still higher than the Fed would like. And then I think there's some evidence that auto insurance, which has been, you know, over rising over 22 percent, is beginning to sort of normalize. And I think sometime before the second half, auto insurance is no longer going to be, going to be contributing to inflation. So that's the dynamic we think that's at play in this upcoming May CPI report. That comes out May 12th. The other lead I didn't want to bury, and it, it, this is a, another like crazy call, Tom. 150000 on Bitcoin by the end of the year. It's already June. Uh, yes. Um, we're still constructive on Bitcoin. There's uh, the tailwinds that are associated with the halving that just took place. Uh, we also know because of the Bitcoin ETF, and there have been tremendous inflows, but institutional sort of adoption and infrastructure being built around Bitcoin is only beginning. And that makes, you know, crypto, especially Bitcoin, a bona fide asset class. And, and I think that sort of uh, widening ownership is going to be propelling Bitcoin to 150,000. And again, surprise that not maybe surprising or not surprising, you know, Bitcoin still follows math, you know. You know, more than 87% of the move in Bitcoin still follows just the number of wallets and the activity per wallet, and both are moving higher. Tom, um, I would think that a lot of your calls are, are based on the Fed cutting. Too. I'd have, Bitcoin's not going to 150 if the Fed doesn't cut. So you, you must think that the Fed is going to be able to cut. Is that because of inflation? Is it because the economy slows? Fundamentally, what do you think has to happen for for all these bullish things in both stocks and crypto to happen with the Fed? Um, yeah, I, I think it is important for the Fed to not have hikes on the table. So I think that's the most important for investors is the Fed is no longer in a rate hiking cycle. But if the Fed makes even just one cut this year, uh, I think it's really supportive of equities because it, it really shows the Fed is trying to sort of nurture the business cycle, and it's a good environment for stocks. I don't think one cut or three cuts makes that much difference for stocks. But again, you're, you're exactly right. It all depends on inflation, really the edge coming off enough for the Fed to say we're, we're comfortable cutting this year. But not necessarily. A, a, we, we could have Goldilocks. We could have inflation come down and the, the economy continue to do 
okay. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think the the company's earnings have actually really spoken to how, in a five percent pretty restrictive rate environment, earnings have been really robust. I know consumers. There are some trouble signs out there, but consumer leverage is still quite low. And of course, if the Fed does begin to cut, there's a lot of levers that will boost both consumer wealth and and company demand. So I, I think there's still positive catalysts that are associated with a Fed cut eventually. All right, Tom Lee. Uh, that not much more that that needs to be said. We'll we'll be able to like. That's just way too specific. Uh, but we'll have you on, and and we'll check uh, July. Maybe we'll have you on July first. See what's going on. We're not gonna. We won't be mad if you're not exactly right, but because you're you're willing to go out on a limb all the time with us. So we appreciate it.